guys, welcome to my Oki channel here in Sweden. Today's not just any day, it's Oki Society Day. And our local vendor is going to attend to the meeting with a couple of new plants out for sale. Let's see if I get a couple of new plants or if I do not get any. I'm also going to make a, an update on the Fragmapediums I got from Epigenera, Germany, formerly known as Rulki. Let's celebrate one year update, shall we? On the orchids, and even on the orchids, yeah, the orchids you have seen right now. It's one of them from Wickman Orchidine. Let's see how they're doing. Yes? Back from the meeting. Two beautiful Fragipediums. Two primary hybrids. Yeah? Let's start out with the smaller one. Ah. Look, I added on a layer of moss. We can keep it damp and disinfect it a bit and hydrate the surface layer. I did forget to add on this calcium supplement as a little top dressing. I was so eager to get started, so I started out without you guys. <laughs> yeah, so. So it's uh, a little bit of seashells, nothing. Fancy. It is Fragopedium sedenii. It's a quite common, very popular primary hybrid cross between two very, very different <laughs> looking Fragopediums, especially in size. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, both flowers and size. Fragopedium longifolium, yeah. a frag with very, very long foliage, extremely long leaves. Yeah. And I think the smallest frag there is, Schlimmii, very popular and a species, of course. This one's flowers, varies a bit from plant to plant. I know why it's so popular. It's blooming quite frequently, at least twice a year. With shades of red and pink and green and white blooms, it can differ a bit, yeah. You see my point? They're quite different. And the blooms carry sometimes a bit of speckles and veinings, so it's a little pattern to some of them. If you're lucky, you're going to get the one with a little bit of green and red. Well, I'm very happy I got it and I watered it. You see now? These guys are sometimes, oh yeah, I've seen many cases grown in semi-hydroponics. But, uh, well, I want to grow these the very same way, all of my frags, so I know what I'm dealing with here. I got so much else in semi-hydro, so why not? keep them in a traditional way, in medium to small grade bark, a little bit of perlite, charcoal stuff. Uh, it's not time for it to be reported yet, but maybe when autumn arrives, yeah. So, um, this is my traditional way nowadays for them. You just need to see too that I change water to the reservoir. Don't let it sit there. The water will be a little bit too acidic for them, and they do not like acidic water. Leaf tips and the new growth will become blackened. And that's a sign, very poor sign, on it getting a little bit too sour. Yes. That's why I added on a bit of calcium. And sometimes a bit of bone meal in the mix. Yeah, that was that orchid. Here's another one. For the time being, a bit better. The Wendy even told me she looks a bit pregnant, so I think we can look forward to some flowers quite soon. Uh, it's a lot better in size than the other one, but it should be. This one is the Fragopedium Incantricia. It's a primary hybrid cross. I already have one of these. A poor one I got a couple of months ago. It must have been a division from this plant, or uh, yeah, a poorer division from another plant. But uh, I'm going to show that one to you so you can see that these guys can be not so vigorous as well. Yeah? Here it is. Very same setup. It's been on its way to the trash can several times, but I just think, well, wait, it's still got roots, yay, I have space. But look now, one, two, and three, new growth coming. So maybe 
if they make it, it won't um, rot or the soil will become too acidic in water. And they will turn black if they don't. Yeah, this one will recover. Ink and treasure. It's a terribly great plant. <laughs> if you compare it, the ink and treasure. A. Cross, primer hybrid cross, as I said, three times between longifolium, yeah, the very same orchid that's in that one, yeah, and the famous frag Kobakiai, yeah, I love and I, yeah, I'm in good company and loving the Fragopedium Kobakiai, but that one is very, very difficult to grow, that one, yeah. I tried out now for one year and yeah, you're gonna see it very soon. It's hybrids are quite spectacular as well. So the striving for making a hybrid, Kobakia hybrid, with huge, just as huge flowers as the original species. But it's not easy to accomplish, but they're getting close, they're really getting close, yeah. Anyways, this one carries very large, extremely large. That's the reason why I got it. Uh, pink curved baby petals. Yeah. It's uh, long lived flowers, easy to grow. It's a very sturdy orchid, it says. And its flowers are 14 times 14 centimeters. That's quite heavy. With 12 centimeter long petals. Yeah. And its bloom season varies, so you can expect blooms at any time. Yeah, that's great. And as for the Cymbidiums, yeah, <laughs> do not have anything in common more than they are both orchids, but <laughs> better saturation of the flowers if grown cooler. Yeah, we noticed that one, didn't we? Now this one is medium to large size orchid. And flushing is really, really needed. Yeah, I can see a tag down there. Oh, what is it? <laughs> Yeah, uh, we'll find out when I report it uh, in, I think, in autumn or so. The vendor has been um, reporting it every other year, but I I prefer to report it uh, more often. <laughs> A couple of tags, that's funny. But you can see, roots are seeking the way down into the water. So it really didn't need to adapt and slowly make its way down to the water reservoir, as in um, almost every other case, when you grow in semi-hydroponics. Well, this is a kind of false semi-hydroponic. But you need to flush them. That's very, very crucial. So now I'm going to take a real quick look at my oldies. If you enjoy frags, you're going to enjoy this video. Let's bring. Uh, <laughs> That's I gonna need. To, I, uh, I'll need to find another space for them. They're growing quite fiercely now. So this one is a very lovely red, extremely red, flowered uh, primary hybrid, Framipedium memoria dick Clemens. Yes. This one is from Wittmann Orchidine in Germany. Yeah. This one is the old growth. Might as well just <laughs> cut them off, but it looks taddy. But they're supposed to look taddy after a while. And just like Paphiopedalums, they're dying off. Look! Several new growth. Here. You can see. Well, it's not so great, perhaps. Middle leaf, but it will recover. It's not black. Yeah? I think it's got a little bit of water in there. But, um, oh, a couple more. So, and another one, newest fan, scrolling to the middle. Yes, looking great in color. And no black leaf tips. So, that's great. But look at the very best thing. I added on a lot of, yeah, I can see Whitman. Uh, I added on a lot of this musha cork, so it's still cancerous, not acidic. So I guess that's why <laughs> this one made it. But it's got a very, very good root system now. Hmm. 
you know, searching its way down to the water. Should never, never dry out these guys. So it's time to flush it, I believe. Yes. Let's take a look at the website, just a quickie. You can see they got a quite good selection of Fragmipediums. You can see. Ah, here he is. Let's look at the care sheet. I look at the beautiful red flower. What does it say? Seemy shady, moderate to warm. Mm. Irrigation poor every seven days. Yeah, that's not enough. Fertilization once a month. Well, no. <laughs> and it's a mature plant, pot size. Well, flower season, autumn to winter. Yeah, so not yet. And yeah, you can see the cross between the red, beautiful Bessii and Fragmipedium sargentianum. So, So I guess, if I play my cards right, this growth will bloom in autumn. Ah, happy for that plant. Really, really happy. I've seen his flowers. They're quite amazing. Not so small sized, really. Quite huge for this size of the plant. Yes? So, what kind of monster do we have in front of us now? It's also a Wickman Frag. Eric Young. In growing stage. For the moment, quite huge plant. New growth there. Maybe something else there. But uh, it seems like I hope she's gonna be sequential. What's this? Yay! It's a second spike. It's coming from down there. I think. Or maybe. Yeah. No, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. This one is, <laughs> for sure, a little bud, yeah? And this one needs to be repotted into something more. Not a clay pot anymore. I need to water them each and every day. Even, even though I have the sauce, I fill it up. It doesn't matter. It's not sufficient enough, yeah? It needs to be uh, constantly saturated. So a bit of new medium could be very, very nice for it. And these guys are very, very rewarding plants. You can divide them, yeah, and sell a piece quite easily. So, Eric Young, what is it? It's quite a huge plant, so I guess one of his parents are very, very long-leafed. <laughs> one of his parents is the very same as for the Dick Lemons we just saw. Look at the difference in size. The Bessie eye is one of the parents, yeah? Strange as it seems. And Longifolium. Look now, Longifolium. Where did I hear that before? Hmm. These two new guys has got both Longifolium as one of its, the parents, yeah? In background, yeah? So, Longifolium, indeed. Frequently used in breeding, obviously. Yes. So. What about it? Let's check out the website again. And here we have the Eric Young. Can you see what a gorgeous bloom this one produces? Well produced very soon. Uh, 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 very cheap for that sized orchid. 25. That's cheap. Look, it's a bit of green and a bit of pink and red here. Yeah? So it didn't inherit a lot from the Bessie eye. But still a bit. It makes it so beautiful. Yellow and green and pink, yeah. And a bit longer petals. The results of the flowers varies. Um yeah, it's a warm grower. Mature plant, yeah, of course. Blooms in summer and autumn, so well, mine is a bit early. This is me. Bessii, longifolium, as I said. To make this picture a bit. Yeah, it looks a bit pale on my computer, but it's more saturated than this, yeah. 
in reality. It's so gorgeous. I love this orchid. And it's really not in the way that it's a spike for his first time. Yeah, let's continue with something else. Oh, this one is a huge monster. It seems to be doing better in his clay pot, so I think she, it will remain in there. Look, it's a gorgeous orchid. Oh, I can barely remove the tag. Orchid Central Wickman. Rabbipedium Vestner, super grandy. Now, I would like you guys to see my little short video on it in bloom. So, you can enjoy its beautiful flowers. This one really, really surprised me in a very positive way, shall I say. Before, I just want to add, is a cross between, ba -ba -ba, believe it or not, long effolium. Yes. Certainly has got long foliage <laughs> and Humboldtii. I don't know anything about that orchid, but take a look at its beautiful blooms. And please put down a comment if you like them. Well, guys, we are able to see him bloom simultaneously. Yes, old one and this new one open up today. It's still got some more work to be done but I mean to uh, yeah, to deepen the colour and such and to make the petals grow. You can see the difference now can you? Look the old flowers petals very long and pronounced. And this one's starting out with short petals. It's quite interesting to see uh, these flowers progress Fragmipedium. Yes. And it continues to uh, grow its pouch as well, as you can see. A lot smaller pouch than on the old flower. So. Now, what do you think about the blooms? First, now, super grandy. Since it's a bit cooler or moderate temperatures, but oh uh, well. Keep evenly moist. Yeah, it's almost the same. Uh, care sheath yeah. on all of them except for the temperatures varies a bit and of course <laughs> the progeny <laughs> did I get the whole thing wrong? Frag Papobii and Frag Longifolium hmm maybe it's another name for that one I'm not sure but here it says Papobii and Frag Longifolium hmm I need to look it up of course I will but extremely vigorously growing. I can <laughs> certainly recommend this orchid to you guys and the Wickman Orchidine for its lovely prices on the frags and quality, of course. Yes? So now over to another one. This is a beautiful little hybrid, Kovacii hybrid. I decided to get after what I hadn't watched another YouTube channel. A guy showing me this miniature, Kovacii look like hybrid yeah grow smaller than the species go back here but it produces very very similar flowers although one yeah half of the size <laughs> but it looks so cute it's just like a baby copy yes i just had to have this one um and i just have to have a little new growth ah yeah we can see that Samuel Crothers. Let's not forget the name. Yeah, it's a hybrid between Kobakii and Fisherii. Yes, orchid web. <laughs> if you're into frags, as I am, I'm getting really, really into frags and their history. The fishery family created the uh, frag Fisherii. So yeah, look at its root system. It's an incredible development from. Barely none, almost zero to none when I got it. And now, look at the characteristic hairs. Keep oxygen around the roots. Uh, that's what they're there for. Just like inside of noses. <laughs> hairs. Quite good progress. A bit taddy leaf set, but well. And the water reservoir is so, yeah, it's almost, yeah, it's quite dry now, so I need to flush them. But I, I like this orchid, yeah? 
let's check the website to see what it looks like. So this is a Equigenera orchid, Equigenera Europe, Frag Samuel Crothers. Yes. It's like a miniature Kovacii, isn't it? Quite rounded petals, good round pouch. Yes. Large flowered, intensely coloured, two to four round flowers open, you know, one after another. You know. Doesn't say much. It's propagated from seed. Yeah. All right. Last one. Uh, almost. I have one more left. Yeah. The king of them all. But this one is not so bad. It's really improved. Lakey. Fragmipedium. Vusna. This Vusna. Always this Vusna. It's really following me. Haunting me, this name. Vusna, Rose and Glance. Frag, Kovacia and... Frag Kerosenum, yes. Looks a bit like the Incan Treasure. Yeah. Can we find anything down there? To the base? Nothing new yet? No. Primary hybrid, yeah. Primary hybrid cross. Do we see roots? Mm, couple. Couple, couple, yeah. Quite dark roots. I think it had really dark roots, so it could be uh, really um, fooled to think that they aren't alive. This one looks healthy enough. I just need another fan, one or two more fans, and we're good to go. I think this one was the crappiest one of them all. And I, I, I yeah, I did divide it, yeah, and sold a piece. It's a little bit. Yeah, it looks so tatty, so I just, I just separated it from the other one. It was quite loose, so it didn't matter. It didn't do much good for the orchid in... Uh, uh, overall health, anyway, so it didn't really help. <laughs> so before it died, I decided to divide it and sell it, so, yeah. Hope it's still with us. But just a quick look at the website. I do not have it in stock, so I need to... Um, here. I need to uh, search the dot .com <laughs> from another country. Probably Ecuador. <laughs> so, let's see now. Rosenglanz. No. Oh, maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. We shall see. No products. One more try. Yeah. Yeah. There's another one. United States Corporated. Corporation, I mean. So... They have it. So now you know what it looks like. The Vesna Rosenglanz. Quite similar to uh, to the Incan Treasure, but its petals are pointing uh, sideways. They're not sloping downwards, so to speak, as the little bit more long petaled uh, cross Incan Treasure. Yeah. This is one, they <laughs> say, this is an uh, exquisite hybrid. It stands out for its alluring flora display, typically feathering the genus signature pouch like blooms. Yeah, no, it doesn't say much, yeah, really. But this is what it looks like. Yay. Now it's time for the heavy duty stuff. I will deal with these guys later. It needs the maintenance, it needs to be uh, flushed. Needs to be added on, perhaps a little bit of this. And reported on stuff. But let's just wait with that. And report the key. Yes. Now I'm gonna report the key. And this is the mixture. I even added it into my blender. <laughs> so I could get a little bit more fine grain bark. That was actually possible. A little bit of spag, a little bit of perlite, a little bit of charcoal. And a whole great deal of this. That's what I'm intend to use for this spectacular 
father of them all. The Kovaki eye. Yes, let's get a map from there so we can proceed. So, try the period of Kovaki eye. Yeah, it's from Groreshna. And it's been, it was this size when I got it last year, one year ago. It's 35 euro, quite compact, quite sturdy plant. Yes, if I compare it to the other one I got, the lousy plant, three times the price. Which is uh, dead, yeah? Thrips got it in the cabinet, even. It's strange, but anyways, this one is better. But, um, yeah, it's news growth. This leaf is not really the greatest. It's rotting down there. So you can see there are very finicky. I'm not sure that this growth is going to make it. But at least it's trying to do something. But uh, it needs its moisture. Um, <clears throat> when my um, cabinet was broken, or shall we say it was leaking, I couldn't keep my orchids in there, of obvious reasons, so it took one week to uh, re-silicone it, yeah, cabinet there. And meanwhile, they needed to be in room temperature, yeah, dry air. It lost a couple of leaves due to it, didn't matter how much I sprayed it, tried to mist it and stuff. Just couldn't take it, alright? It seems like changes in uh, humidity. It's taking a toll on these guys, yeah? Last season I had these guys from Equigenera outside on the balcony. They were thriving as long as they got a lot of rainfall, a lot of steady temperature and loads of moisture. And when I brought them inside, yeah, it started to decline. Yeah. It's taken them almost six months to bounce back. So, anyways, so loads of humidity. This one shouldn't be drying out. Yeah, but still quite a good root system, I can see. They need to be uh, repotted quite often, just like the uh, paths, yeah? So, whatever. But it's not bad, and it didn't have bad roots when I received it either. It had good roots, so I'm just going to flush off the excess little debris here. Absolutely, yeah, one, one dead root after all this time. That's quite amazing. So I'm going to clean it off, get back. So now it leaves us with this little question. What to decide to use for it? It's a little bit semi-hydroponic. Yes, quite high reservoir, but the pot doesn't really go all the way down there. But, but uh, I thought this one was better, but it's the very same thing with this one. Doesn't go all the way down, but it leaves a little bit of room for uh, potential roots piercing through the holes, so yeah, they can lurk down there. <laughs> uh, I think we're gonna head for this one. I think it's 11 or 10, yeah, 11 centimeter pot, perhaps. Quite unusual size, flat bottom. Well, that's great. And yeah, this is actually another new growth, so oh, maybe too new. Uh, we shall see what happens, but it's growing this direction. That one we can be sure of. So, I think this part is going to be perfect for it. As long as I keep it hydrated. We shall well from now on. Evenly hydrated. Evenly moist. Not in this dry clay pot. I do love clay pots, but well, not really the best of ideas for these guys. Kovaki eyes. It takes a lot of effort, a lot of work. So, the small grey bark. Loads of perlite, loads of added calcium. Yeah. This shall be sufficient enough. It's in the cabinet, high humidity cabinet. It's going to stand in a water reservoir. Better reservoir this time. So it doesn't really need to be all that uh, careful. I mean, 
all this burrow by uh, pressing it to the back side. I mean, this guy is going to be needed to uh, be reported anyways next year, so we won't have outgrown the pot by then. So, Let's see if it takes off now. We'll let this so it will be distributed better around the roots. Yes, looks quite right. Yeah. Not really satisfied yet, but soon I will be. Yeah. It's roots, it's got a tendency of sticking up, <laughs> facing the surface rather than going downwards. But there's going to be changes to that now when I can feel that they got loads of moisture down there. So, not going to be stretching up worse anymore. like a path reporting actually not so very different but now lay off this while we're at it so let's not forget the top dressing layer of sphagnum moss and then we're good to go with this orchid they all look similar in a similar setup treated the very same way And that's it. Yes. No water inside that little uh, crown, shall we say. But uh, I don't know if that one's going to make it. But there will still be a couple of more coming if they make it. This one is... Uh, I'm glad and happy as long as this one does something great. All right? So, goodly good. A lovely little reservoir with a bunch of nutrients. Yes, so the Covacchia is reported. And <laughs> knitting stick. <laughs> yeah, the wooden stakes will be uh, <laughs> full of mold before you know it in the cabinet. So, uh, preventative courses. Like always. I'm going to clean its leaves with the milk method. It's good for fungus, yes? And it really, really does a trick for the leaves. Makes them extremely shiny. It's a milk trick. Very, very efficient, yes? I think this one has been sprayed one too many times <laughs> with some kind of oil, so let's, let's just look. Yeah. Not easy to photosynthesize with that lot of shit debris and <coughs> stuff stuck to the leaves, so now we're rid of it. Almost. So, Kovacii reported. Let's add on that info. To my notes. We'll see what it does. Well, probably there will be an update before long. Yeah. So guys, I hope you like this video. Quite long, quite intense, but well, I was the update. So hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe, share, and return. Yeah. Take care, and we should talk soon. Bye bye, guys. Good to see you.